Welcome to question 7 of the 2009 Mathematical Methods Exam 1. In this video we will be looking at the solution and examination advice for this question. A reminder that this video is in no way endorsed by VCAR. So we need to consider the random variable x that has the probability distribution given by this table and we're asked to find for part a the probability that x is greater than 1 which on this table would be 2, 3 or 4 given that x is less than or equal to 3, which less than or equal to 3 would be from 3 all the way back until 0. Therefore, the intersection would be this green region here, which is 2 and 3. And the reason why we needed to find that intersection is that this probability of x being greater than 1 given x is less than or equal to 3 is equal to the probability of their intersection, which is the probability that x equals 2 plus the probability that x equals 3 divided by the condition, which is x is less than or equal to 3. And that will be on the bottom line, x is less than or equal to 3. And now if we go and find those probabilities, the probability that x equals 2 is this 0.4 plus the probability of the x equals 3, which is this 0.2. So that gives 0.6 divided by. And then less than or equal to 3 was all of these probabilities. So that is 0.1 plus 0.2 plus 0.4 plus 0.2 again, or 1 take 0.1 if we use the complement. And that comes out to be 0.9. So we don't usually leave decimals in fractions, so we can simplify this to be 6 over 9 or another way of writing that in its simplest form is 2 over 3. So that is the answer for part A of this question. So from the examiner's report we can see that 53% of students managed to get full marks for this question, with many being able to correctly identify the intersection for that probability that was given. What to do with the condition eluded many students, so they didn't set up the full fraction correctly. Some students did not write a proper fraction or stated a terminating decimal as their final answer. So just a reminder that the final answer should have been the simplified fraction of 2 divided by 3. For part B we're asked to find the variance of x. So we need to look and see that the variance of x has a formula e of x squared subtract e of x all squared. So to calculate the variance we're going to calculate those two things first. So if we do e of x squared, that means we simply square all the x values and then multiply by the probability. So we're going to have 0 squared times 0 0.1 plus 1 squared times 0 0.2 plus 2 squared times 0 0.4 plus 3 squared times 0 0.2 plus 4 squared times 0 0.1. And then if we simplify that down, 0 squared times 0 0.1 is simply 0. Then 1 squared is 1 times 0 0.2 is just plus 0 0.2. Then we have plus 2 squared is 4 and 4 times 0 0.4 is 1.6. And we add on 3 squared is 9 times 0 0.2 is 1.8. And then we finally add on 4 squared is 16 times 0.1 is going to be 1.6. And adding all of that up, you should find that that equals 5.2. So this value here is going to go in that part of the formula. Then we're just going to calculate e of x, the expected value of x. And that's just going to be x times the probability. So 0 times 0 0.1 is going to be the first one. Plus 1 times 0 0.2 plus 2 times 0 0.4 plus 3 times 0 0.2 plus 4 times 0 0.1 and then simplifying that we get 0 times 0 0.1 is 0 again plus 1 times 0 0.2 is 0 0.2 plus 2 times 0 0.4 is 0 0.8 plus 3 times 0 0.2 is 0 0.6 and then add on 4 times 0 0.1 which is 0 0.4 and when you add all of that up you should get that that equals 2 so that value there is going to go as part of this value, and then we still need to square it. So therefore, our variance of x, which is what this question asks for, is equal to 5.2 subtract 2 squared, which is equal to 5.2 take 4 is 1.2. So that is the value of the variance of x, which is the answer to part b of this question.
So once again, that question was done correctly by around 50% of students, and most were able to write down the correct rule for the variance. However, some of them neglected to square the mean to obtain the final answer correctly. So just keep in mind that that squared term, we need to subtract away two squared, otherwise you would get the wrong answer for the variance.